Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda, and this is Gizmo. Every week we come to you on Mailbag Monday and we tell you about our life here in Central Florida. We have a good show for you today. We're glad you're with us. We're going to talk about the villages, the size. One writer wrote in it this week and said, I was promised that the villages was going to cap out at 110,000. And the police are patrolling our cart paths. What activities have we picked up since we moved here? And someone wants to see our shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a good one. <laughs> and what do we regret leaving behind when we came to Florida? I don't know. All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We had a big week. We went to a, an activity down in Sawgrass Grove called Boozy Bingo. Was that a fun evening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Janet invited us to come down there, and wow, we did not expect. I've never seen that many people at one activity, no. and they were having a ball. There yeah. was tables set yeah. up. There was a, sort of a DJ-type person mm -hmm. up at the entrance, yeah. and uh, they would play music, songs from the 50s or the mm -hmm. 60s. And you had their names on a bingo card. And if they played Buddy Holly, you put an X. Next, they might play Elvis Presley. You put an X. When you got the, you know, correct sequence, mm -hmm. you'd yell out bingo. And then you'd get booed. A if thousand you, people would, would boo, boo you at you because you won. Winning. And uh, you would win a $10 gift card, which yeah. you I could use it, at McGrady's Pub or yeah. somewhere like that, which would, Just, you know, get you some ketchup or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I drink. But, but what a great activity yeah. down at Sawgrass. We, we didn't take Gizmo with us. No, we're going back. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Good time. Thanks for the invite. Right. And we had, we played, you played golf a little bit this last yeah. week. And we played card games with a, a couple. That yeah, was fun. Yeah, we did. And you might have seen us go live up at BJ's Wholesale. Did you see that on Facebook? We ate lunch up there. You know, big spender. Mm -hmm. But check out this hot dog and drink for $1.50. Come on. <laughs> that was a big hot that dog. That was fabulous. Jerry ordered two, but he could only get one down. He said, no way can I do two. I mean, I'm, all, I'm always eating two hot dogs. <laughs> I know. Maybe he three does. if they're those little Oscar Mayer yeah, beans. Yeah, but they, it was great. <laughs> and we also had St. Patrick's Day this last weekend, or on Friday, and boy, that was a big day. We had several readers send us photos and mm -hmm. videos of that. I, I, I didn't get to go. I had a big day myself, I'll tell you about in just a second. But that St. Patrick's Day up at Spanish Springs, and they dyed the fountain green. Oh, yes. The Clydesdale horses wow, were there. Wow, that was amazing. We saw many pictures of that. Uh, we have seen Clydesdale horses, but uh, up close and personal, and that would have been fun, too, to go see. I was sorry to miss that. Mm -hmm. But on that particular day, I was invited to take an airplane ride, and we decided to fly to Fort Myers and watch a spring training baseball game between the Boston Red Sox and the Atlanta Braves. Mm -hmm. And on the way, we stopped in Orlando, landed the plane, and picked up our oldest son and a grandson, and he's just four years old, mm -hmm. almost five years old. He wasn't scared, was he? Wasn't scared wow. at all. We had a ball. It's going to be another pilot, maybe. Red Sox got thumped in the game. I like the Red Sox. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I do. They have a replica of Fenway Park down there in Fort Myers. Oh, cool. And they've got the green wall monster, you know, the big wall the in big left wall. field. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Just really cool. That was a, a definitely a, a good memory. Mm-hmm. Why are you waving your hand at me? Well, because we're done with that page. <laughs> huh? She's going like this. We're, we're come on, come on, hurry you up. You didn't get see over, it. I'm down here. Over. Why are you doing that to me? I thought they mightn't like to hear about that. Yeah, I know, but you were done. Okay, well, it's <laughs> done. Well, we, we said we'd do it several times last week, but we never did. We were going swimming. We did not, and the weather got a little cool this weekend. It was in the 60s, so yesterday was pretty cool. 
But we had our 85 degree days too. We did. So yeah. we're going to start yeah. swimming yeah. a little bit more. Generally go in the evening when I don't shock as many other sunbathers, <laughs> you know. But it's fun and uh, we're going yes. to start going over there. Upcoming entertainment here in the villages. I looked at the schedule. Holy cow, there's a lot of great stuff coming up. If you go to thevillagesentertainment.com, you'll get the whole yes. schedule of events coming up. And there's way too many to mention. So go there and check it out. Some, some really first-class entertainment. Yes. Let's do our sweet and salty. Mm-hmm. Am I sweet? Are you salty or what? Which Who's, who's going to be sweet? I think the viewers know that. <laughs> I'm a very sweet person. <laughs> You are. You're sweet. See, they were supposed to be playing our theme song. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do sweet and salty. I'm going to do the sweet today. Linda's usually does the sweet. I, I clip this, uh, and I don't often get things out of the newspaper or on next door, but this was on there, and I thought it really hit the kind of the, the nature of the villages. Mm -hmm. Someone wrote, we have good neighbors in the villages. I left $60 in the self-checkout at the Walmart on 466. Oh. Someone turned it in right away, and before leaving the parking lot, I realized I left it. I ran back in. I'm so grateful that someone was so honest. Thank you, whoever you are. You know what? I don't think there are too many towns in America where you could leave $60 cash somewhere and somebody's going to turn it in for you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, like her stamps. Remember that a few weeks ago? Yeah. She left an entire roll of stamps, $60 worth of stamps, mm -hmm. and somebody turned them in and she got them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty nice. Yeah, very nice. You know, I remember a story back in the day. We were on a vacation, and our son, one of our sons, I can't even remember now, had a little coin purse, and it was full of cash, and we lay, he, lay, he was so excited about putting his money up on the counter to buy something at concession stand or somewhere, and you know what? We turned around to do something. I got sidetracked, and I tell you what, that money was gone. Someone took my son's birthday, mo money. birthday money oh. off the counter. And that was so sad. I hated that. All right. You ready for your salty I comment? I am ready for salty. That was kind of salty there. All right. This is kind of salty. Kind of going to get me my dander up. Would it hurt Linda to put on some blush and a little eye makeup? Looking a lot pale. Well, that was from Blonde Jam Cartmel. Hmm. Well, blonde, blonde jam, I wonder if your hair is really naturally blonde. Well, <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yes, we don't want to offend you, blonde jam. <laughs> We're just teasing. Oh, my gosh. Well, okay. Remember back in the day, we would pinch our cheeks. You wouldn't, but Linda, the that girls was, would. that was written before you had your makeover. Okay. Did y'all watch that makeover on Thursday? Yes. Oh, I worked at Bargains and Blessings on Friday, yeah. and I had some people come up to me and says, Oh, Linda, you look so good. And she goes, and all that makeup. I said, yeah, and all that makeup. It was fun to do. It was a <laughs> great day. I had a fun uh, time doing the blog, that little episode with the makeover, but... Um, I'm not really into she had a, She had a good time. Yeah. Uh, what a day for me, though. Four days. <laughs> oh, my God. That was the worst four days of my life. <laughs> and, and then I get the pleasure of watching her good clothes that I had bought her for Christmas and birthdays. Out the door. Yeah. Out the door. Out the door. Out, out the, the door. door. <laughs> and this is what I now can't get to carry. This is pretty cool, isn't it? This is the paint chips from the paint store. These are the colors that I could wear. Now, that's pretty That's pretty handy. Is this color on there? It sure is. There it is. That purple. Well, mm -hmm. anyway, pur bright purples. But, yeah. Well, she had fun. You know, yeah, and, and I for did. me it was funny because she got all that makeup on and she says, I look like a drag queen. <laughs> I mean, anyway, a man dressed up anyway, like a... Anyway, Blonde Jam Cartmel. <laughs> First of all, get a better name than that. That's a terrible name <laughs> to, uh, to be posting with. A little eye makeup and some blush. Yeah. My first question is from Ralph and Larissa from Silverdale, Washington. My wife and I always like to put in a home vegetable garden. Do they allow a couple of small raised vegetable beds in the backyard? Well, 
we have seen a couple, we were on a cart ride and we've seen a couple raised beds in the driveway or beside the house. And I thought it was legal. But so I got on the phone and talked to my friend of mine who is a sales agent here in the villages. And she said, there's nothing specific to gardens. However, there are no, not supposed to be any structures on property of any kind without the approval of the ARC. And that's the... Architectural Review Committee. Okay. Nothing is to be added to change look of exterior property without approval. She uh, gave you some good lingo there. That's what's in the written rule. Mm -hmm. However, in the villages, if you put up a replica of the Eiffel Tower in your front yard, nobody's going to make you tear that down unless a neighbor complains. Yes, yes. So if you put up a raised bed, which by the way, a raised bed is usually a 2 by 8 or a 2 by 10 or a 2 by 6 however, just a however high you want to raise it, and you fill it with soil and you plant in there. If you do that, uh, I, I don't know many neighbors that would complain about it, mm -mm. but you could get a complaint. And if you did and you didn't have permission, which you're probably not going to get, you'd have to tear it out. However, look at this little known statute from Florida. No county, municipality, or other political subdivision in Florida can regulate vegetable gardens on residential properties. This statute only protects your right to grow food for you and your family to eat. So that tells me right there that if that statute is real, and I looked it up and it looks like it is, that you can grow food for your family on your lot. Mm -hmm. Now you wouldn't want to grow it in your front yard. You've spent you know, maybe yeah. $500,000 on your house. Do you really want to put pole beans and <laughs> pepper plants in your front yard? But on your back patio, maybe. Yeah. But the, the whole takeaway is if your neighbors complain, you could have to remove a raised bed. I would say if you have one, keep those neighbors full of the peppers and onions mm -hmm. and give them some tomatoes when they get ripe. Yeah. And, and they're not going to complain. Spread the joy. Yeah. That's true. All right. From Chris Smith. Do you regret moving away from what sounded like a great place? <laughs> you seem to have a great life there. Chris, you know, if you think about it, sometimes you get a little bit sentimental because we have done so much in the past. We had 85 acres. It was paradise, really. You could not even see another home from that farm that we owned. We had the biggest, most beautiful white-tailed deer, yeah. foxes, uh, coyotes, rabbits, squirrels, hawks. And it was a neat place to go visit. Mm -hmm. It got to be too much for us to take care of, and we were not getting any younger. So I don't regret selling it. I really did love to have it. Our sons don't live in Indiana, so they couldn't help me take care of it. And if we still owned it, they couldn't take care of it now because they live hundreds or thousands of miles away. That's right. So no, we don't regret it. What I do regret, though, you already know, <laughs> little things that... You know, you think you're slamming the door on your old life and you're coming to a totally new life. So you don't need your big tools. You don't need your collections of this or that. Yeah. My advice is if you're in doubt and it's small enough for you to get here, bring it. And then after you get settled down and you have a level head, because you don't have a level head when this is all happening. You don't. You're in a tizzy. Your <laughs> head is spinning. Yeah. You are so overcome with this joy and this new life and you don't need this other stuff. Yeah. You know, maybe you wouldn't give away your arrowhead collection or your duck decoys. We had an amazing group of, I love duck decoys. The old folk art. Yeah. We collected them for 35 years. Yeah, we did. And uh, I, I got rid of every single one of them. Yeah. Well, maybe I kept one or two. We've got, we got one or we two. We've got two. And things like that. And little tools that you think, I'm not going to go down there and, and overhaul a car or I'm not going to go do any woodwork. Mm -hmm. Keep your little tools because when you get down here, you will... No doubt, find that you need that <laughs> yeah. tool. Yeah. So keep it. And if you get down here and you don't need it, you can take them over to Linda at Bargains and Blessings and donate them. Mm -hmm. Or you can set them out on the curb and some neighbor is going to be so happy to get your junk. That's true. You know, one man's That's junk. That's true. And yeah. just bring it. If you can get it down here, bring it. Now, about the old furniture. If you've got an old black sofa or some big, giant, bulky furniture... Some of that you may not want to bring, yeah. but little things, bring it. Yeah. But regrets, 
I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. Is that a song? It is a song. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> this is from Sherry and Gary. What activities have you started doing in the villages that you never did before? Why didn't you do them back where you came from? Sherry and Gary. I bet they have a son named Terry and Larry. <laughs> yeah. You think? All right, you first. Well, when we got here, we were so excited about doing a lot of the activities. We got involved in ukulele right away, and we absolutely loved it. It was a lot of fun, and it was pretty close. We uh, enjoyed going to the uh, rec center in our golf cart, and uh, we, we had a good time doing that. But then they moved that club down south to 44, and we felt like that was far away. And then we got involved in so many other things that that kind of went by the wayside. What activities have you picked? up since we I know. Well, uh, water aerobics. Yes, water aerobics, stretching, walk off pounds. Um, yeah, and I didn't get to do any of that before. Oh, golf, of course, golf. Oh my gosh, and I did not do that back home. I had the opportunity, maybe. With our Jerry played golf, our three sons played golf. And I was just, I just was along for the ride. I never thought I would ever own a golf club of my own. And when we got here, it was just a thing to do. And she's good. She had a hole in one. <laughs> I did. At least there's one hole in one in the family. <laughs> in the family. But uh, yeah, golf. I never thought I'd ever golf. And, and for me, bocce. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Pickleball. I've I've tried water aerobics till I got him all embarrassed. And uh, fishing club. I'm in the woodworking club. And I'm playing golf. We love puttering around in that golf cart. We had never done that before. No. Those are all things. Yes. They say there are 3,000 clubs here. You're going to be able to find one that, that appeals to you. Yes, yes. Okay, the big question today. A reader writes, Greetings. My husband and I moved to the villages in 2009. We were assured that the villages would cap out at 110,000. Well, that didn't happen. We hear this kind of thing all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. You know, people will tell you, I live in Sumter Landing. I was told they would never go south of 466A. Who keeps telling these uh, these stories, these promises? I live south of 466A. I was told it would never go beyond 44. Yeah. Then, you know, I'm sure people down there say, I didn't know it was going to go over the turnpike. Mm -hmm. We talked to one of the powers of the villages that told me the population last year, maybe, maybe more than a year ago, was 132,000. So that 110 has grown, but now, holy cow, if you're looking at the literature they're putting out, they have bought so much land. Mm -hmm. I'm, I would not be surprised if the population didn't reach 200,000 within the next 10 or 15 years. Yikes. So, and is that a bad thing? Well, as long as they keep producing the infrastructure, the golf courses, the rec centers, the places, the town squares, you know, for entertainment. Yes. And then, you know, she'll tell you. Retail. She wants places to shop. I want places to shop. They've got to come up with places I need for places to go to. I don't want to go all the way to Spanish Springs for my house to go shopping. I want something a little closer. And all of us feel that way. You don't want to get in your car and spend a half an hour, 45 minutes to go to where you want to go shopping. Well, you know, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. You know, so you're building all these houses. People know that people want more, you know, McDonald's and Chick-fil-A's and Culver's and, yeah. you know, maybe some retail stores. Mm. We're getting a new Home Depot. Mm -hmm. We're getting a new Target. Yes. It's going to keep on. We shall see. All right. Mm -hmm. This is from the Brown family. A lifestyle visit sounds nice. In fact, it sounds like a great vacation. The thing we don't want to get into is a repeat of a bad experience we had going to a timeshare presentation. We thought we'd never get out of there. Oh, Jerry has a story about that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we visited uh, off topic, but I mean, hey, you didn't come here Time for share. expert advice. You came here to see how, <laughs> what, what, what we'd, how we'd mess up. We were visiting the Smoky Mountains with our family <laughs> probably 20 years ago. More, more, oh, than, more, 20, than, more 20. than 20. And this place called, I think it was Westgate, had timeshares for sale. But they lured you in there by saying, listen to our 90-minute uh, presentation and we'll give you tickets to Dollywood. 
Yes. Or tickets to the Ripley's uh, Museum or whatever. So it, the aquarium, I believe it was. But so, who, you know, didn't matter. Uh, we we decided we would listen because we wanted to see these cabins anyway. Yeah. So we went up there and listened, and 90 minutes passed, and we said, thank you very much. That's really beautiful. We love it, but where's my tickets? Well, we need to show you one more property. Well, your 90 minutes is up. No, sir, we'd love to show you one more cabin. So we let them drag us out to another cabin. Not on the property either. We had to go out and see it. We saw it. We came back to the sales center, and we said, thank you. That was beautiful. Where's my tickets? They said, well, sir, I, I need to have somebody come and speak to you. And so, It got and, to be like four different people were talking yeah. to us. And I said, and, and we're in a giant room, like a cafeteria with probably 50 other people at tables getting this same crazy drilling. Mm -hmm. And I said, you either give me those tickets or I'm going to stand up on this table. And he would have. And, and make a scene. And <laughs> Anyway, we got our tickets and that was great. <laughs> but here in the villages, there is no pressure from the sales agent. Mm -mm. You know, we came, we know, we did it. And mm -hmm. there was no sales pressure. No. In fact, we have heard from people that if you don't want to even see your sales agent, once you check in, yeah. they'll give you the keys, they'll give you your, your bicycles, your golf cart, your tickets, all that stuff, and then you're on your own to explore. So very low pressure. Mm -hmm. Don't let the fear of a pressure sales pitch interfere with your lifestyle visit. No. The villages sell themselves. They really do. You don't have to be pressured. It's an amazing place. Once you get here, you're going to go, oh, and that's it. You're that's gonna true. Go, oh. When we came here, though, we had made up our mind. We wanted a pre-owned home. We wanted yeah. one that was already up and running mm -hmm. near the golf, closer to the shopping, near the things we wanted to do. So I did not want to go down south, south of 44, to look at homes out in Finney and those places. And they really want to take you out there. Yeah. Because on a resale home, they'll get a commission on the sale, but it's better for them to sell the new homes. Mm -hmm. And that's where most homes are for sale now. They're down there. But we didn't want to go, and they didn't pressure us. Mm -mm. So don't be afraid of the pressure. No. From Kathy and Carl in Santa Monica, California, what's the thinking behind no garbage cans? That has to be inconvenient. All those bags. We have a big trash bin on wheels. It's so easy. Mm. We didn't like that either when we got here. We yeah. thought, what in the world? Because yeah. we were used to those big and rolling things with two big handles you would drag down. Yes. The truck would hook on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, here you had to use, when we moved here, you had to use clear bags for recycle, black bags for trash, and brown bags for yard waste. That's right. And so we had to buy all the bags and use it. And we thought, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. That didn't last too long. Now we still now we have done away with all that. We just have trash bags, right? Mm -hmm. We can put anything in our trash bags. No problem. They're right. all the same. Place. Recycling, garbage, everything goes together. Even put your yard waste in there. And I'm gonna tell you, these are the best I'm gonna call them trash people. What about should I say? Sanitation? Sanitation collectors. The best you're gonna find. Mm -hmm. They have it down to a science mm -hmm. and they will come through your neighborhood. They won't linger. No. They don't sit here and raise and dump cans and no. they throw those bags and they're running behind the truck. These guys are great. They are. And phenomenal. they get it done like that. Yes. So uh, I think you're going to like it once you get here, but it does sound odd. Back in Indiana, we had neighbors that would leave those big trash bins out two weeks at a time. Yeah. And they'd tip over, the wind would blow them out in the street. And you know, they were heavy. Our driveway went up to our house. So when I'm bringing it down, and if it's loaded, it was so heavy, I would have to try to keep She'd it She'd almost from, ride it down there. She'd be holding on I and be dragging her down the road. I'd be trying for it not to run over me as I take it down. So this is just so easy. Now you walk out, put your bag down. It's amazing. You gotta remember, they want you to put it out in the morning that they come, but the hours come before 7 a.m. Yeah, they're 6.30. They come very early. 6.30. And, and if you put it out the night before, you run the risk of a raccoon, which we have a raccoon that loves to get in our trash, drag it out. But it's usually not too big a mess. No. Linda, we know you're a great cook. Well, that's a matter of opinion. But was wondering if you prefer an electric stove or gas stove. I have always liked to use a gas stove, but I heard they are not allowed in the villages. I've always used an electric stove. We've always had it since the day we got married. Um, my parents had gas for a while, then went to electric. His parents always had gas stoves, but there are gas stoves here. Right, some of the neighborhoods have natural gas. 
we we have nothing gas in this house. Not a water heater, not a dryer, not uh, a stove. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we know that the government is pushing toward the end of gas appliances. So mm -hmm. I guess that's good for us. But some people dearly love that gas mm -hmm. cooking. Now, there are some areas that do. I think the no northern section in Spanish Springs, there's areas of gas. There are lots of them. And then I know our neighbor across the street put in a gas tank in their yard so that they could have a, a gas stove. They buried one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it can happen. Okay. Sam and Sandy from Columbia, South Carolina, right? Who polices the golf cart paths in the villages? We've heard you say that carts can only go 20 miles an hour, mm -hmm. but does anybody really check it? That is a timely question because yes. a viewer sent us this picture of one of the new police golf carts that are going to be patrolling. Oh, yeah. I could have a little light on it, a siren. <laughs> I'm all for it because I know yeah. that they're going to give you a little buffer. You know, if you're going 23 miles an hour, I don't think you're going to get a ticket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you're going 30 miles an hour, I think you, you probably would. Mm -hmm. And I also heard that somebody got a ticket, and I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, for crossing a white line with a golf cart passing. Ooh. You can't cross, a, supposedly, you can't cross the solid white line. Oh, yeah. But I don't agree with that because sometimes you get right behind a bicycle that's only going 10. Yeah. And you don't want to go three miles behind somebody going 10. You've got to pass them. Or, or mm -hmm. you know, the, the the trails along Hillsboro right. or Pinellas, they have a solid white line. They do. Yeah. They do. But always watch. Always look. Always always check your mirrors. I, I you have that. not seen one of these golf carts yet. And no. I even called the sheriff's department and asked for a ride along. And I haven't got a call back yet. That's something about the villages. Callbacks are hard to get. <laughs> but I, hopefully I'll bring you a newcomer's eye view of uh, the new golf cart. Yeah, that'd be great. This is from Amy Allen in Flint, Michigan. What kind of shoes do you wear most of the time in Florida? Can you show us what you both wear? Show well, what I wear. <laughs> these are what they call <laughs> natural. And in our house, we're in socks <laughs> all the time. Our well, will you take them into your closet and show them your shoes? Uh, I will. All right, let's go. Well, that was a good look at your shoes mm -hmm. and my shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but frankly, sneakers is where it is down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people wear sandals. A lot of people wear sandals with socks. <laughs> I like that. My dad did. <laughs> but you know what? Tennis shoes, sandals, flip flops, and barefoot. No, in the house, not outside. <laughs> Why not? Uh -uh. Brian McGuire from Westerville, Ohio writes. Our whole house generators for houses that have natural gas allowed in the villages. With the storms you get in Florida, it'd be nice to have that backup power. Mm -hmm. Brian's one of our top viewers. Mm -hmm. Brian, yes, people do have them here. But I want to make it clear that 
in four years and what now, three months, four months, mm -hmm. we've never had more than a 15 minute power outage. Yes. Knocking on the wood. We were shocked. It was 15 minutes. We were going, oh, it never happens oh here. Never I happens. I was trapped. I was back in my recliner. It's electric and <laughs> I couldn't get out for 15 minutes. So we do know people that have buried those uh, tanks to put those generators in their yard. And if you had an area with natural gas, it'd be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But you, you can have, I guess you can have them. You'd have to check with the architectural review committee and get a permit. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you for sure. But we do know people that have them. All right, let's do our shout outs. This is Elaine and Maya and Sue. Elaine is just the sweetest lady. So sweet. We love Elaine. <laughs> now, she lived here. She lived right next to our buddy Mike. You all know Mike. He's like our fourth musketeer here. Mm -hmm. uh, but she, for family reasons, she moved back to Georgia. And she loves it here. So she came down this past week for a visit. And she called us. We got together. And we're so glad she looked us up. And uh, her granddaughter, Maya, is adorable. She's so sweet. You know, uh, she was g g giddy. And she says, I just want to move here. I, I want to get a really good job. I'm going to make a lot of money or whatever. But she wants to move here when she's older. <laughs> Roy and Cindy have a little dog named Whitley. They are hoping to have a new home here in the villages by Christmas. By the way, Jerry is loving that cap that Roy is wearing. See you when you get here. This is Jeff and Carla and Carly and Kendall. Jeff is again, he's one of our top viewers. Hey, Jeff. And they're coming on a lifestyle visit in May uh -huh. to see what the village is all about. And by the way, that picture right there, Jeff, is a good illustration of why I ask people to write, send them in uh, <laughs> landscape and not portrait. Yep. Because you can see I, I cut your head off a little bit and I cut your daughter's chin off a little bit. And that's what I got to do when you send in those portrait pictures. But it's a great looking family and we look forward to seeing you when you get here. This is Chris and Susie. She's a frequent commenter on our channel. And they were up at the Orange Blossom Country Club. We visited that. That's a wonderful place to go to and during their lifestyle visit. And they plan to move here in October. Pete and Sue Celeberti. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. Celeberti? Celeberti? Tell me, Pete. <laughs> but we know that uh, you're a, a great viewer. And I absolutely, I absolutely love it yeah, when you... Send in those pictures in your Jerry and Linda t-shirts. And don't they look great? <laughs> they do. <laughs> Such happy, positive people. That's what we have here, and we need all we can get. Mm -hmm. And yes, Pete, we do like you. <laughs> this is William Burns and his wife. They're coming for a lifestyle visit stay at the end of May, and they had a question. We'll go ahead and answer it right now. Are there any self-storage units around the villages? Yes, there are many of them, and they're probably full. <laughs> I don't know. We don't have one because we got rid of a lot of junk. <laughs> and what's his wife's name? We don't know. How come? I don't know. She, they, he didn't say. Yes, another pointer. Yeah. When you send in a picture with two people, please identify them all. That helps. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> Mike and Joy are Texans, and they recently moved to McClure. Joy was a teacher. Mike was an employee at Southwest Airlines. Here they are standing by that gigantic ship, Wonder of the Seas. Ah. Joy bumped into me at Walmart and she said, we just got back today from our cruise and we had just gotten back from our cruise too. Mm -hmm. And it was really nice meeting her and talking to her. Great people. Mm -hmm. This is Dina and Mark in the New York Mets dugout. They are from Queens, New York, and we missed Mark's birthday. It was a couple days ago, but we want to wish him a happy birthday, and we will see you when you get here. Yes, indeed. We get these requests for shout-outs, and boy, they stack up, and mm -hmm. uh, we get to them when we can. And sorry we missed your birthday, Mark, but that is so cool that you got to go into the Mets dugout. Mm -hmm. Gizzy, are you ready? <laughs> you don't look ready. He's got you a look heavy, sleepy. heavy head today. Are you ready for your segment? Have you got anything prepared for us? All right, take it away. Oh boy, about a month ago, 
Mom and Dad took me to the vet. She said I was losing my hearing. Ah, oh, I haven't heard from her since. I went with Dad the other day. He let me ride in the back of the golf cart over to McDonald's. And he pulled up to the drive through and he ordered a large fry. And oh my gosh, you should have been there. It was crazy because they gave him like, I don't know, a hundred. <laughs> Mom is getting so excited about springtime. Oh my goodness. She's running around here like crazy. In fact, she was so excited, she wet her plants. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for all the jokes you send me. I love reading them, and I love telling them to everybody. See you next week. Good job, mister. <laughs> you always get it done. We appreciate yeah. it. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Bam Bag Monday. Be sure to tune in for Thursday's show. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. We've got a couple on the uh, mm -hmm. percolator. Mm -hmm. They're percolating. Yeah, they're percolating. And uh, we'll let you know. But we're so glad you came with us today. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and also follow us on Facebook. Until next time. See you when you get here. <laughs>